What's going on, eaters and feeders? This is episode three of four, and it's an interview that I did with Tom Orlandi from Craving Time Meal Prep out of Niagara, New York. Tom's been following me since my beginning on YouTube, and I've been with him step by step, helping him uh, as I can through my videos and my experience growing his company. As uh, we mentioned in an earlier video, they're at they got up to uh, 2,000 meals this week, 2,000 meals a week. That's pretty impressive from one cook a week. If you haven't seen the other episodes, you might want to check those out. Again, this is number three, so you've already missed two if that's the case. If you're new, normally I don't do these interviews. This is something new that I'm going to be doing, and I'd be, I'd be very interested to hear feedback from newcomers, from people who have been watching me for a while. So let me know in the comments below. Also, speaking of below, we've got links. Tons of resources, content, tools, materials, and all sorts of stuff that I can't put on YouTube. If you're new, you don't know anything about those links, but you need to learn about them. Check out the links in the show notes. Also, check out mealprepbiz101.com. I've got so many more free resources for you. Also, please make sure that you've subscribed and you've got the alert notification on so you don't miss out on any of my new content. I do it weekly, I go live sporadically, and I don't want you missing any of it. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing morning routines, power of emotion, eating only fruit until noon, menu rotation, purchasing, relationships with vendors, customer service, reviews, hiring in 2020, and all sorts of other stuff. These episodes are jam-packed full of content, so let's jump right into it. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to our channel where we go behind the scenes of our meal plan company, Fit Food Fresh, and other local businesses across South Florida. Make sure you hit the subscribe and alerts so you never miss a video. Hit us with any questions or suggestions. So what's your what's your current routine? That's that's one thing I wanted to ask you because I'm I'm always switching up my routines and playing with the chemistry. Sometimes falling off and getting back on. Probably going to have this out before New Year's. Maybe some of the people watching it be able to learn something. I know you were doing what are they the power ups? What was the Tony Robbins? I started doing it after you recommended it. The oh yeah, the it's the six the sixteen minutes of of guided basically uh, thirty reps of intense breathing. Uh, because I, I can't meditate, man. I don't know about you, but I can't not think thoughts when I'm meditating. It's so super hard. Even if I'm guided, even if I'm being told what to do, my mind just goes in so many different directions. So when I, I watched uh, I'm Not Your Guru uh, about a year, a little over a year ago, and uh, yeah, he was uh, he, he went through this breathing exercise, and I felt like a dumbass doing it. I feel like, is anyone going to see me? Now I just I don't even care. I'll do it in the middle of a mall. I'll probably do that, though, but still, I don't care. And uh, it just, it really got to me because when I, I'm not a very emotional guy, but when he tells you to kind of put your hand on your heart and just think, of, go back to a time where you were so grateful and it, literally it never fails. Every time I do it, I go to my daughter. I think of my daughter when she was born and the time I like put my hand on her, on her heart and they stamp my hand with a foot. You'll experience that soon, man. Like I get like super emotional and it's just like, it's, this is a really like, it sets that 16 minutes up for me. Like, it's amazing. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm sure shit. I'm like, why am I crying? That's, <laughs> so, that's awesome. No, it's, I've, I've learned like in my, my older years that, uh, I'm, I'm growing more and more. Like I've always been interested in philosophy and mindset stuff. And I'm, I'm glad that it's something that no matter how much I feel, I know, I always have this almost a fear where it's like, Oh, I almost feel like I know everything. And then I learn more. I'm like, wait, I got, I got way more to learn. And it's like, oh, I, I think I got it all figured out. And then there'll be another thing to it. But definitely like lately it's been not just being comfortable with emotions and like negative emotions and, and weakness and everything else like that, but also like just enjoying it. And like, even the, the sadness, it's like, you're alive. It's, it's some volume to what's going on. Like you're not this, prisoner in a cell you're out here in the real world experiencing these things the highs and lows and it's all meant like the sweet isn't as good with the uh, without the bitter and like powerful emotions especially like and i've there's some songs even in experiences like there's a you know what song gets me and i don't know why it's not like a sad thing or anything is the um the disturbed version of the sound of silence just it's just so well done it's like now i've i've unlocked this ability to have such an appreciation for art or even sometimes someone's job or something like that where like it mo it stirs me emotionally like when when that song it, the song is just so well done and his voice is so deep and it's so powerful it's like I, it tears me up it chokes me up and the um that experience the 
what is it called? The charge up? I haven't done it in a couple of months. The priming. Tony Robbins one. Priming. Priming, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing that. And the the thing that I always go back to is proposing to my fiance. And like I, I never think about it ahead of time. It's mm -hmm. like I forget that you do that as part of the thing, but every time it's like the first thing I go to and it it gives me that emotional thing. And like you're right, man, like go coming out of that, you're you're alive. You're like, yep. you know, I'm here. Yeah, no, that's it's it's well, it's this, the basically the second thing I do. My alarm goes off between four and four thirty. This is when I don't have to be at the shop at the butt crack at dawn, even if I, I do a shortened version. But let's just say this is like my my Monday through Friday. I wake up, I autom automatically drink thirty two ounces of water, if not more. Pound that. Uh, have my coffee. Come into my office where I'm at right now, and uh, I go and I do my guide, and I still guide. I mean, I could probably do it on my own, but I still have him guide me for those sixteen minutes. Because if I'm not, I'll probably tail off and I'll do it for like a half hour. Yeah, we'll do that, and then uh, when I'm done with that, I write down my my goals, my long term goals, short term goals. I journal every 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 day. Every day I'll journal. I'll just try to get what's off my brain, and and I do what you know. Tom built by Bill you by you. I keep I never say his name right. Sounds it sounds familiar, but I, I can't. He has something called you know how people meditate. This is called thinkitate. So you think, like just game plan. What's on your brain? Kind of like journaling, but it's like you're you're masterminding your next move. I'm writing that down. Thinkitate. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool, man. It's it's uh, Tom Billu. He's the actually the he's the creator of Quest uh, protein bars. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he has a um, a, a podcast called Impact Theory. Okay, all right, yeah. cool. You dig him, man? He's awesome. He he sold Quest for a billion dollars. He's uh, he's just a just a really intense guy. You'll really you do dig him, man. You dig him a lot. So then uh, once I do that, I kind of plan out how I want my day to go. So I'll kind of go through my calendar, organize, okay, what do I have to do? Who do I have to reach out to? Who do I have to call? Who do who did I reach out to and not receive anything back? Uh, at that point, I'm also going through my emails. Uh, from there, that takes me to almost 6 o'clock. And then I know I'm one of those weird guys where I have to shower before I go to the gym. So I, go to the shower. I have to, I don't know why it just, I have to I awake. It, I'm already awake. It, I feel it wakes me up and I feel I'm Italian. So I feel greasy. <laughs> if I, I don't, I don't like it. So jump in the shower and then I'll eat, uh, you know, Jesse Itzler, another guy yeah. I follow. Yeah. The, uh, amazing uh, guy. The the uh, what's that? Golf, not golf stream, but his airplanes that the airplane company that he owns. Oh, I thought, isn't he the dude who did the book uh, "Living with the Seal" and his wife is the owner of Spanx or something? Or my yeah, his else? wife's the owner. She's the she's the billion dollar owner of Spanx. But he also he started cre creating luxury airplanes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, dude. I don't. It's not it's not Gulfstream. They're, it's very similar to Gulfstream. So yeah, you wouldn't you look at him be like he looks like a dirty hippie. <laughs> I thought didn't he and he did something completely different, right? Like he did like coconut water and like didn't he have some other like health businesses or something? I think he had a, he has a bunch of them, man. He's just an awesome, amazing entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah, I've seen some interviews with him. He's uh he was actually at one of Grant's things and his wife was there. Wow. He's Down just that, that, what what a what a what a group to be connected with. So yeah. he about 20, 25 years ago, a gentleman came up to him and uh told him about I only eat fruit from when I wake up until noon. Yeah. So he's like, okay, fine. And here's me. I'm always tons of oatmeal. I'll put fruit in it. I'll maybe do some eggs and I'll drink, obviously drink a ton of water before I go work out. And I've noticed that I'm like, okay, I want to be at the gym, but I don't want to move. I just, I'm feel very sluggish, cloudy. My cognitive thinking is just not there. Uh, so he's like, he tried it for 10 days. On the 11th day, eating fruit just until noon for when he woke up until noon. On the 11th day, he went back to his normal breakfast, right? Seven o'clock, had his oatmeal, and he's just like, he felt like a bag of you know what. Just felt just odd. Ever since then, he only ate fruit until noon. And I did that probably like 20 days ago, and he was right. On the 11th day, I went back to oatmeal. I was cloudy. I was lethargic. I was just, I wasn't very like sharp. 
Hmm. It's very interesting. So I only eat fruit from when I wake up until noon. Now there are some days where I, it's like 10, 10 30 and I've been up for, you know, six, almost seven hours. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to have a meal because I'm, I'm ready. So I'll grab a craving time meal and just go ham on it. Yeah. I, um, I've been, I used to try so hard to force breakfast down. It was never something that I had a good habit of doing and it was always so difficult. So I've been doing, uh, uh, I know people go back and forth on it, but like intermittent fasting, I don't, I don't eat really normally till, I mean, it depends on the day, but I could easily sometimes go till four because it allows me to just get into work. And then like, I just house whatever I want. Like I'll have, you know, maybe sometimes do two or three f- food, fresh meals and we'll get some pita out and eat some chips. And it's like, that works for me because, and I remember years ago before I started the meal prep company, um, there's a business owner. I was in the call center industry and this one of the owners and he was like this out there kind of dude, this dude, James. And he was just big dude. He was like kind of built, but like kind of hippie. And he's like, Oh, I just started doing jujitsu. And he just seemed like one of those guys who just like gets into stuff. And I remember him talking about how he would just drink coffee until um, like 8 PM. And then he's like, and then I just like house. And then I just eat four hours worth of food. I crash in bed by one, but he's like, yeah, my trainer turned me on to it. And it was before anybody was saying intermittent fasting. He's just like, no, I just drink coffee all day. But Uh clarity is something that I definitely noticed. Like you were saying, like you eat something and your, your body puts energy into digesting. It's like, all right, let's focus resources here. The fruit I'll have to try because I could see like the carbs and the, you know, that helping your, your brain kind of run and give you a good amount of energy. Do you feel more focused? Like cognitively, it's just like all firing. It's all, it's all there, man. It's so, it's so interesting. As soon as he said it, I felt it and I didn't realize like I'm doing it. And I, I had more energy that very first day and I just carried on to the, to the following nine days. Uh, it's just, it's just very tactful. You're very like your cognitive thinking is just, it's just so on point. And I'm just like, I notice I'm like firing away on back on emails and I'm like, wow, this is like, I'm not used to this. This is weird. And I just, I'm in and out of the gym in probably like 90 minutes when I would like lollygag and not even just, just like feel it. Like I want it. Yeah. I love going to the gym. I've been a, a gym junkie since I was in my early, you know, early twenties, late teens. And, uh, I just, for like the longest time I, I would get there and I'm like, I want to be here, but I don't want to be here because I'm just like, no, I can't, I don't feel it. It's, it's not a, a sense of moving my body. It's more like focusness. Do you, uh, do you eat like one type of fruit? I think, I think I saw him talking to Joe Rogan or somebody. I feel like that's, that's something that he said is he only eats one type of fruit per day, or maybe I'm confusing him with, uh, Steve jobs, I think was a fruititarian where he only ate like bananas all day. And then the next day it's all grapes. You focus on one fruit or just anything goes or yeah, anything that the fiance grabs. I mean, I'm, I'm a fir- firm believer. If I'm going to go work out at least four or five bananas and then I'll do, my daughter loves those, uh, those peaches and water I'll yeah. house, those grapes, berries. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bogart my daughter's fruit. <laughs> do you, is there, is there anything you feel like works better? Like, so, so bananas are gym days. Is there like something that is, uh, I don't know that you've noticed, like doesn't work any type of fruit where you'd be like, ah, that kind of like left me gassed or it burns up too fast or, I tried only berries one morning and I ate a whole pint of blueberries and like a half a pint of raspberries and just house some strawberries. And I was just like a half hour into my workout. I'm like, yeah, I'm depleted right now. I just, I'm not feeling, I kind of got a little shaky. Like I was getting that, uh, the diabetic crash feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So I always have, I have, um, Harboro gummy bears and uh Swedish fish in my uh, in my bag because the harbor harbor don't and don't get the the sugar-free ones by the way because it's got like a it's got a an x-lax in it, it just makes you freaking makes you have diarrhea but the harbor uh gummy bears the regular ones have dextrose in them dextrose is an, an amazing car well, you shouldn't you know this an amazing card for lifting that and i just love sweetest fish so if i'm feeling a burn i have to I pop a couple of those you said you're you're pretty consistent with hitting the gym in the morning before going to work or like, how's your, your normal, normal day-to-day schedule? Is it pretty consistent? Uh, it's, it's different. Um, Tuesday through Friday, Tuesday through Friday, I'm basically home with the baby and that's Sarah's time to go shopping, 
get in the orders, start the prepping, start the, you know, sanctioning off the food. And we kind of do what you do where we kind of go off previous week's numbers. So we're like, okay, cool. How much chicken should we make for this, for the chicken farm, for the stuffed chicken farm? Uh, cool. We did this many last week. Let's account for this. Once time gets the numbers, we'll adjust. Do you guys uh, rotate your menu weekly or monthly? How often does it change? It, it's kind of sporadic, man. It, I go with what's not selling. If something's like dropping severely, I'll uh, I'll switch it out. So it could be, I could switch it weekly. It might be three weeks until we switch something and there's no real consistency. It's just, we do have something though that's called, uh, we I send out the email, it's New Meal Monday. So people really look forward to that. And that's when we have like the most open rate. When people see that, those words, it's like, we go from like a 30 to 40% open rate, which is ridiculous. I don't, I don't I love email. that idea. And that also keeps the business model uh, way more simple. We, we felt this obligation to change the menu weekly. We're like, oh no, people are going to get bored. Um, but mm -hmm. then we ended up creating the favorites menu because some people are like, well, I have to wait another five weeks to have that lasagna again. It's like, all right, we'll just put it on the favorites menu. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, like I said, the, the more simple you can keep it, the easier. Cause that's, that's going to make purchasing everything way easier. Where do you guys, where do you guys uh, get your supplies from? You guys have any truck deliveries yet or you do yep. 100% of the shopping yourself? We do basically go through one place called Palmer's. They're called, they're just based out of Rochester, which is about an hour away. Uh, my buddy's the rep. Uh, he gives us de really decent pricing and uh, quality food is what's probably what more important to me is is there. And he doesn't, he doesn't BS me. He tells me time that's just, that's not a, it might look like a good deal, but the quality of the product's not, it isn't good. And I only want quality. So, yeah, no, that's, that's important. You definitely want to make sure you're, you're befriending your, um, your purveyors when you can. And a lot of times, it's hard. So when you already have somebody who's your buddy and you've got that relationship and they can kind of guide you because they see more product than anybody, man. Like those guys, one of my buddies, well, he's, he started off as our old, uh, he's our, our first rep with GFS. Now he's working for Cisco. He moved to uh, Atlanta, but um, he's, he's learned a lot. He's like, I'm, I'm three quarters chef by now. He's like, I've learned so much because they go through the different ways to cook the product because they want to be able to give you ideas and give your chef ideas and like, oh, and, and restaurants be like, oh, maybe you put it on the menu. You do it like this. I went through a cooking class and the steak company had like a five-star chef come and show us how to do this. So they get really intimate with the product. So having somebody in your corner who's like seeing this stuff come and go, it's like, ah, wait for it. And like, or oh, we got a killer deal on New York strips or something like that, a really good cut of uh moonfish or pompano coming through so it's it's good because i mean quality i like that you guys put that as a high priority because that's, yeah. that's a major differentiator well, what, yeah. um, hmm? is is that like a, a common like what are the companies like around your area are they more they go for low price to compete with or are there some some decent quality products out there as well there, you know, I base everything off the rep and, uh, I like my, obviously my buddy cause he's my buddy and he's, he used to be a cook. He used to be a chef. So I like that, that he went from the chef part of the business to now selling the food. So I trust him even more now. Yeah. There, I, there, there's this place. I don't know if, is this curtsy go near you? Is there, is curtsy? Not that I'm familiar with. No, that, you know, they have probably the best quality of products, but the rep is just a, Pardon my French, an asshole. He he is. He's like he came in and he's he's like, let me see your menu. Why are your price is only like that? I'm like, why? Why? Because I'm competing with someone that offers five dollar meals. He goes, well, it's it's not even close in comparison. I'm like, I understand that. I I get that. That's like my prices are between seven and eight dollars per se. Uh, there's also some people that are close to ten dollars and they don't get a lot of business. I'm like, you're in Buffalo, New York. You're not in Boca. Florida, <laughs> I a completely different demographic. So we're, we're fair. We're a little on the higher side. And, uh, he just kept like shooting us down and like begrading us. And I'm like, you're really not doing a good job trying to earn my business, man. Uh, he's like, well, the only reason this is because this is the best, the only product you should be getting. And I'm like, okay, awesome. Great. Awesome. And he does like the, the quintessential sales guy approach. Like Tom, you, you know, what, what did I do wrong? Well, what do I got to do to earn your business? Well, don't be a jackass. You know, be, yeah. real. Don't, be real with me. Don't be a freaking, don't, don't try to sell me. Try and help me. Why don't you try to help my business? Yeah. Trying to sell me so you can help your freaking pocketbook.
by the way, get a haircut, fix your tie. (laughs) (laughs) We, uh, we, we've definitely seen our share of characters. A big thing is like relationships over revenue. Like you, you need to make sure that you're watching not only relationships with your customers, but you know, the purveyors and it's got to go both ways. We've, we've got some guys who are like drop everything and drive to another County to pick something up because it wasn't on the truck and chefs in the middle of a cook. And, and, and it's, it's cool when you have those guys. So like having your buddy, that's a, it's definitely a strategic advantage. And if not we've driven an hour away to pick up like one case for us, just because it wasn't on the truck. So it, the 100% man. And like you said, uh, quality over what did you say something over relationships profit. over revenue i i you know it's funny i say people over profit all day yeah people it's just my my members are, are the utmost importance to me and i will and i understand sometimes you have to be a doormat to these people and i, I don't mind that man i i love that game i love i love yeah i'm like uh, gary vanderchuk i love hearing crap i love hearing when people have something bad to say about me because it just means an opportunity where other people just kind of go on the defense and uh just kind of bark back I'm like, that's just dumb yeah i've seen um i'm not going to name any names but i've seen a few meal prep companies where the, the owners will get on like their yelp and they'll like they won't take it to the face they'll sit and fight and you're not going to win a battle and now like the next person's just going to see like the really good ones are is when you get an unruly review on yelp you're going to get a one star eventually it's unavoidable yeah. and you just take it and you're just apologetic that shows that everybody else are like okay well you know at least they're willing to get on and get the service i want because it's inevitable i'm going to go to some restaurant in the future and i'm going to have bad service i'm not going to not go to restaurants but if i know that this restaurant that I haven't been to yet, at least has like the recovery down pat. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a gamble with them. And I think reviews are going to be, people are looking more for transparency, especially with all the stuff we've seen this year. Oh, yeah. People are looking for more and they're expecting more transparency. So the more they can see about your track record, I mean, look at everything, Google or uh, Amazon and eBay and offer up like everywhere you go, it's tracking your previous performance. Um, with a relationship business like this, where you're buying my product every single week, if you don't have ego control, you're losing out on a lot of money. Cause you know, no one, no one's going to have a perfect week every week, you know, one out of 10, there's going to be a hiccup. And if you can't take it, are there any like, like uh mindset kind of ego control kind of stuff that you, you listen to or, or, or get your like kind of customer service energy and, in essence from, or is that just oh, kind of Gary Vanderchuk all day, man, I, I will listen to him and he's just, he is so customer oriented and it's just, uh, it, it's just so nice to see a guy of that stature and how he's so humbling and he's still, he's a firm believer. I mean, guy's worth like 200, 300 million dollars. And, uh, I mean, he looks like just like a regular guy on in New York city, just walking the streets and he just doesn't care. He's, uh, He's just, he's so, I mean, he's just so intelligent. He's light years ahead of us, man. He's just, you, you obviously listen to him, right? Yeah. 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 He's just, he's just so good with his customer service. I remember he told the story the one time I get when his, him and his father had the, uh, the liquor store and, uh, he was he, around Christmas time is like this busiest time is December 23rd. And they just got into, uh, uh, deliveries. And I think this person was like three hours away in Jersey <laughs> Uh, there was a lady that didn't get her, her bot, her, her, what is it? Six bottles of Rose. He's like, it was maybe, maybe a $40 case of wine. Lady didn't get it. She can't go to wherever he is. And, uh, on the busiest, one of the busiest days of the year, uh, December 23rd, he got in his car, drove three hours and gave this lady her, her $40 case of Rose for, for Christmas. And did he get recognition for it? No. Was he, was he looking for it? No, it's just, it's the right thing to do. It's just what you do. Cause he goes, in all honesty, I could sleep better at night now. And it's funny cause I'll, I'll use that term over and over to people. They're, if I'm like, you know, listen, you didn't enjoy that. Let me get you at least one free meal on us on your next use this promo code on your next order. And they're like, no, no, no need, no need, no need. I shouldn't even say anything. They're like, no, actually I'm glad you did. And if I don't fix this, I won't be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get it. So, yeah, I, I, um, 
I love Gary V because some of the, the best stuff he says is stuff that almost it starts off sounding kind of counterintuitive or you're like, you're crazy. And then he like explains a little bit more and you're like, you genius. Yes. And that's what, yes. What's great about him is a lot of the stuff isn't the, the obvious stuff that you would see. It's like the stuff where it takes you a little bit to see it. Like some of his insight is just like so on and he just, he's, he's just so in tune that it just comes out. It's not rehearsed. He, he actually, I didn't, I don't think it was a, it was a Grant Cardone event. Grant Cardone keeps coming up um, where Gary V he was supposed to be there for like 15 minutes. He said, and he ended up going for an hour and it was just like, what's crazy about him is like, these are speeches that I'm sure he said some of this stuff before and it comes up in conversation, but it wasn't like thought of, like he had a conversation with somebody there and it went off on this tangent. And then he just spoke for like an hour and like, you know, somebody knows their stuff when they're able to just like, and it's just like so insightful. And that's another one of those like celebrity dudes where I just admire them. They're just on another level and they're, they're doing something they're passionate about. And um, so cool to recognize that in somebody else and, and see someone like killing it like that. And that's a, that's an awesome customer service story. Like those things are, you know, those are the moments where, you know, you, you, you like he said, it's not going to, not every time is it going to pay off for you. But like, if you're consistently doing that, all mm -hmm. the once and then that's going to be like the spouse of a decision maker at a big build a big business or something like that and not that you're doing it for that you're doing it for yourself but if you're working on that that harmonic level it's only a matter of time before it explodes into some other opportunity that someone else would have missed out on because they're like eh, i'm gonna let my ego make the decision on this one and yeah. We'll send you a refund for your rose sweetie you know like yeah that it's like it's 40 bucks here you go i'm all right Exactly. Yeah. My, uh, my father actually taught me and I'll, I'll never forget this. He, uh, you're going to do something, you do it right. He goes, your, your last name is on your business. Cause he, he was an entrepreneur as well. Um, so I, I kind of, kind of get a lot of that through him. Uh, so he's, I mean, he's, he's a great, he's a grumpy old man, but he always said, he goes, your name's pegged to it. He goes, you do the right thing. doesn't matter if you lose, if you lose money, because money's not everything. Sometimes it's the name that's more important that will get you farther. So I'm like, okay, I respect yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I've to, to make a literal example, I know some companies who have had the funding, they had the money and that, that gave them somewhat of an advantage, but they didn't focus on their reputation and now they're not in business. And then I'm thinking of one, but I could probably think of several in that's just a literal example of what your dad said is like, they were focused on money. They had their investment. They thought that that was enough and it was until it wasn't. And then you're two and a half stars on Yelp. You're, you can only grow to a certain level. You can only charge so much. It just puts so many other long-term limitations on you that you don't think of in that one, that one conversation where you didn't keep your cool. Well, that's another one star. That's another mm -hmm. lost person or that office that she works in. Now she's going to spread that. And that all those are all opportunities that you lost. Whereas, you know, we've had some people where they're known by their friends for being a bit of a, you know, a bit of a Karen and <laughs> you impress that person. Like we've gotten calls and they're like, you know, Susan in our office doesn't like anything. She loves you guys. So I have to give you a try. Like those conversations, you're just like, oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Have you, yeah. have you have anybody doing your customer service or anything for you, or is that still on you? That's me and Libby. She always she's really good with that. Like we she, we we used to work for the same guy, and he was the complete opposite. If I can take something from this guy, it's what not to do in business. And she was the same thing. She was she did all the graphics for this guy, and she would always come to me. I kind of helped her. She she really got into Olympic lifting. I kind of helped her get into Olympic lifting. Uh, coached her for a little bit and so we kind of we had a commonality and uh she's, just a, she's a good chick man she's a good girl and she would always just come to me and be like i can't believe he's I'm not gonna say his name is is asking me to do this he goes it's ridiculous he goes he's trying he's a con man he's trying to con people in the purchasing memberships so i'm like try try being in my position where i have to actually tell eight nine sales guys that they have to abide by this <laughs> It was just, it was brutal. And that's since I knew since 2018, I needed to do something different. So yeah. 
here I am. <laughs> Sometimes seeing someone do it the wrong way can actually be better. Like if you're working for a company that was successful, it might, and, and they did like everything good enough and nothing stuck out, you wouldn't notice what really made them successful. When you see someone do or act a certain way and it's definitely a detriment to them, like you can, and, and knowing that, you know, I haven't, I haven't had, I can't think of a really bad boss I've had, but I always knew the type of bosses I wanted. And when you start realizing that you're in a leadership role, like it's not anything that I got into thinking like, oh, I'm gonna start a company and be a leader. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna start a company. I got an idea. I want to, you know, build this thing. When you find yourself in that leadership role, it's like I start just thinking of like what what type of boss do I want to be based on what I've had? I want someone who's patient, someone who's cool, who sets a good example. Um, you know, there's the bosses who will, you know without their they'll, they'll pull rank and stuff like that i always want to feel like i was an equal i'm ready to jump in with anybody and customer service i think is paramount and the 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 example that i display when i have you know opportunities to in front of my guys because customer service is the hardest thing that's why i asked if, if you've got anybody else doing it because that's in my opinion that's one of the hardest things to let go of and let somebody else start handling you know like cooking the food. Okay. You know, like driving and all these other things, if they go wrong, anything can screw up your business, but like not more than customer service, man. You got to your phone. Um, that's, uh, what do you think the next position you'd be hiring for is? Well, that's a great question. That's a real, I never, I haven't honestly given that any thought. No, Cause well, maybe, I, maybe it's a, a, a good example that you don't have anything that's blaring. So at least, I mean, there, could be a situation where you're like, oh, we desperately need this. Well, I can use, I can always use, I, I hate to say it, better cooks. Because uh, we're kind of, we're, I'm right now, all the, I'm not sure if it's like this in Florida, but a lot of the restaurants are shut down. So my buddy that owns a bar restaurant, even if they go to 25% or even 50%, he won't open back up. So I'm using two of his cooks right now. Uh it's kind of one of those instances where they're like, Oh, they know that they're doing us a favor. They're not going to be here long term. So are they doing their best? Probably not. So it's just trying to find that, that, that needle in a haystack, man. That's just, it's, we have yet to find him or her. Yeah. It's, um, it's definitely uh, an interesting, I know in, in the last, um, the last time we spoke, we were talking about how that, the, the kitchen is a, an interesting environment to, um, to find the find good people for that's, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I mean, I would feel like you'd have a lot of, uh, resumes coming your way. If, if everyone's shut down, I mean, down here, we got the shutdown as well. And it, it did help. We got like kind of pick of the litter, but I guess also the restaurants around here, we've got a lot of stuff on the beach, a lot of nice restaurants. So maybe the, it's a different kind of demographic. Uh, I don't, See, I don't have a call for like a five day a week or possibly like three days, three days a week would probably be the most. Uh, so the unemployment here would trump a lot of the pay. Uh, and even if it matches or even a little more, some of these people are content sitting at home playing video games and working. They like their free money. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's, that's a interesting, interesting problem to have. Cause you got a lot yeah, of, I couldn't do it, man. Oh. I, if, even if I was getting four or five, six hundred dollars on unemployment and someone's going to pay me three, four hundred to work, I'd rather work. Yeah. I, would, <laughs> I just, I can't, I don't know how people can sit home and play. I can't play video games. I can't. All right. So now we've concluded episode three of four and the fourth episode gets a bit different. We kind of peel out of the meal prep specifics and talk more about the entrepreneurial journey. Um, I like it. It's one of the, the feel good episodes, if you would. It talks more about the opportunities that you have as a meal prep owner to give back, the importance and the power of doing right, doing positive things. So if that sounds interesting, I invite you to check out episode four. Maybe it's already out depending on when you're watching this. If not, it should be coming out very soon within the next week or so. And I hope you found all of these episodes entertaining, enjoyable, informative, whatever. And I hope you've subscribed, you've got those alert notifications on, and you're familiar with the amazing amount of resources I've got for you in the show notes. 
and on MealPrepBiz101.com. I'm here to serve, to inform, to help you grow as a business, as an entrepreneur, and as an individual, and I hope my content is doing exactly that. Either way, I would love to know your feedback, so let me know in the comments below. Good, bad, and different suggestions on what I should do more of, what I should do less of, whatever you got, let me know. Comments below, links below, subscribe, alerts, and I will see you in the next episode.